Hey everyone, welcome to the very first painting tutorial in the warp. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'm going to show you how I painted up this Eldar Wraith Knight in a relatively simple Sam Han color scheme. So I began by priming the entire model black. I used a Vallejo Surface Primer, and as you can see, it went on very nicely. Kept those nice details and provided a quasi-matte finish to it. Looks great. The reason why I chose black is because I want to some deep shadowing and I know that Mephisto on red and the reds I'm going to use from Games Workshop tend to go really well over black anyway so it's all good. So next I decided to highlight the a couple black areas on the model using Raven Black and I used that as just basically the uh, the symbol on the back and the the part on the um, front in which there will be some striping. Raven Black is actually a very very dark matte gray. This is from the Minotaur range, and I also use it to highlight the guns. Basically, what it's going to do is just to provide some nice highlighting and a little bit of variation in tones when a light source hits it. When it's actually uh, when light is not hitting it, it actually appears to be very uh, very blackish. And I also use the Raven Black on the helmet. I'm going to be using Raven Black and now Coal to provide a, just a really nice gradient going towards the center of the face mask of the helmet. I want there to just be a, a line down the center in which when the light hits it you can see almost like a um, just a lighting and it almost looks like a, a reflection of light on it. And then I just continued this gradient with base gray. I'm using my Badger Patriot airbrush for this. Next I just taped off a couple lines for the Sam Han stripes and then I started all the areas with Mephiston Red. Obviously it is a Games Workshop color so I had to thin it down using airbrush thinner put in my Patriot and just start hitting all the surfaces. There's gonna be a lot of red in this model. And as you can see, I basically tried to keep some of the dark shadowing on the model, especially on the legs. Now, as you probably noticed, I am holding the miniature. Uh, the reason was I thought maybe it was a good idea to hold it because it wasn't very well um, attached to its base. But after this particular step, I realized that the best approach would be to reattach it to its base and then just hold the base. I was always just concerned that it was going to fall off its base during the painting process. So as you can see here, I'm keeping some dark black in the recesses and, and some just some deep shadows while trying to just bring the red out on the miniature. And of course, since it's such a huge model, I love using airbrushes for painting these surfaces because number one airbrushes will create a very smooth painting with no brush strokes and number two it just saves a lot of time this is at two and a half speed but as you can see it is not taking me very long at all to base coat this miniature using the Mephiston Red. Airbrushes really do save a lot of time and also they dry really fast I've noticed that almost by the end of this um, step Almost all the areas that I started with were almost completely dry by the end of it. As you can see, it's it's they're uh, actually quite dried now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through the all the GW reds, and then afterwards apply some Caraber Crimson to the recesses just to provide a little more detail and some extra shading in these areas. As you can see, very large model. It's, I think, the tallest model that GW produces for, for, for 40K. Very, very tall model. So it took a little bit of time. I decided to only paint uh, about half of the jewels on this model because I looked at a lot of the pictures and I like, I like the ones that don't have all of the jewels painted. And the next one, I just applied the Mephisto on Red to the handles of the gun. I didn't mind creating a little bit of a gradient in colors on them too. And then once again, I applied the same color to the arms, keeping the deep shadows. And uh, I, I already decided approximately how the arms are going to fit on the miniature. If you're going to use an airbrush, make sure to, to take that in consideration before painting it so you know which areas to highlight and which ones to leave in the shadows. And then just apply it to the parts of the guns. And they're looking nice and red. This airbrush kicks butt. Now, obviously, when airbrushing, please use gloves. I didn't have any gloves at the time, and as you can see, my hands are getting pretty nicely coated in the red paint, and just for safety purposes, wear gloves. And then next, I used Evil Sun Scarlet, the next red in the trio of reds from, from Games Workshop, and I used this red, obviously, to highlight the areas. I tried to keep 
certain areas that shaded with the Mephisto on red and the dark shadows, and just focus on the areas in which my light source was hitting, and uh, just create some great variation in the color. Once again, this wasn't a very uh, this was a very quick step because the airbrush with such a large miniature airbrushes rock. And I'm just highlighting especially the top areas of the chest plates and the back, the knees, any part that your light would be really focusing on the miniature. What I really like about this miniature is it does have a quasi-dynamic pose, so you can use that to create some great shadows on the miniature. And then once again with the arms, I knew how I was going to pose them approximately, and I used that knowledge to uh, highlight the guns and the arms. I decided to go with the two large guns variation on this, as opposed to the sword. The sword is really cool, but I just wanted to go with the guns. And then finally I used Wild Rider Red. And once again, just focus on the very edges and surfaces that I really wanted to pop when the light hits it. But then after this step, I did uh, I took the Wild Rider Red and I used a brush, and I did an edge highlight on surface areas just to get the uh, just to get some of the edges to really pop. So as you can see here, I'm just focusing on the edges of the shoulder pads. And the vents, all the armor, just making it look really nice and just create a nice edge highlight to it. And then afterwards, I'm going to go over with Caravur Crimson. I just decided to paint the blacks. Um, I kind of forgot about the Caravur Crimson at that point, so I just went and painted some more of the black surfaces before that. And obviously when you're doing an edge highlight, just make sure to have a very little amount on your brush and just drag your brush very gently along the surface just picking up on those edges, leaving everything else the normal highlight. And you see, just some of the areas really are now standing out, really popping. Sam Han actually really does have a nice color scheme. I, I don't paint a lot of Eldar, but when I was painting this model, I had a really good time. And just the red and black is a great contrast and a great color combination. And I decided to, to do some of these edge highlights on the jewels, specifically the jewels that the light source, once again, would be hitting. See, this just simple edge highlight really does just uh, brings another level to the painting and some great variation color. followed up on areas of the back. This step took a little bit of time, I guess, just because uh, it's just a quick edge highlight, but uh, no worries. And when the reds were done, I decided to protect the areas with a nice satin varnish. So I applied satin varnish to the entire model. This will do many things. Number one, it will protect the red areas that we worked so hard on paint to make them look nice. Number two, it will also create a great surface tension for applying shades to the recesses. And what I really like about satin varnish is they just have that right amount of shine that you would expect with armor, especially with uh, Eldar futuristic armor. But obviously with the varnish, make sure it completely dries before proceeding to the following steps. Luckily it doesn't take very long. And after it varnished, was dried, I removed the, uh, the paint strips tape strips from that area and you can see great uh, stripes on it and next I focus on the black areas as I mentioned I kind of forgot about the, the Caravan Crimson for a step and I focused on all the black areas of the model which were basically all the joints and joining parts such as the lower part of the torso the neck the arm sockets the the knees behind the knees everywhere where the two armor parts would be joining there is a an area of black um, as well as the vents. For this Abaddon Black, I did add a little bit of a matte medium to it. 
because I wanted to create a uh, just a matte finish on these areas and prevent the shine. And as you can see, even when the light source is hitting, you can definitely see the the highlight that I used on the center part with the Raven Gray from Minotaur. And right now I'm just applying with a large brush all of those areas. There's tons of them of the joining pieces. Just make sure to not accidentally get any paint on the reds. But if you did, obviously you can use a if you properly sealed it, you could use a cleanup step later. This model was a bit brittle, so that I do I do recommend taking caution when you paint it. It was a little bit brittle, so don't break it. And next I applied the Caraber Crimson into the recesses, just which areas I really wanted to just create some extra shading in there and a more and just variation in tones. This is a very quick process. You can just take a very narrow brush and apply it to the recesses. If you get any extra, feel free to smudge it off with your finger or a dry paper towel or a dry brush. And this will just, once again, give a little bit more shadowing to the areas in which I was a little too, I just focused a little bit more with the airbrush. But already there's some great color variation in these reds on this Wraith Knight. And the reason why you take all these extra steps is the Wraith Knight is a very much of a centerpiece model. It is so huge. It is like an Eldar model on steroids that it will tend to draw the eyes of your uh, whenever you're playing a game or someone walks by. They're going to see the Wraith Knight, and it will definitely be the centerpiece where people will focus on. So you want to take these extra steps and make sure it just looks awesome. I definitely would not be worrying so much about detail if I was painting, for example, a Horde Orc army. And then I applied this the shading to the arms. And obviously when it dries, it will be a lot duller than its uh, appearance is right now, where it's actually quite shiny. And we're finally done the reds. We're 12 minutes into the tutorial, and uh, the reds are about done, and that's good. But as I said, it's not a very complicated color scheme, so the reds the predominant amount of the armor. So make the look, uh, reds look good, and it'll look good. Next, I took the Administratum Gray. And I did a quick overbrush to these black areas just to pick up on those raised areas and provide some variation. Whenever you're using a, a, a dark color like black, I always, I, you know, it's always great to do a, a highlight of a, the next color, so gray in this case. And once again, it'll just provide some nice details to those areas. Now, if you find yourself doing too much of a highlight, feel free to then to go over those areas with like a null and oil shade, which will tone down the gray and really blend it to the black. As you can see, it makes the areas really pop. You can see all those, the ribbing. And just do a quick overbrush. Especially with events. And then I did a quick edge highlight on the areas that I knew would be uh, facing upwards on the guns. And then I went back to that helmet, and I hit it with a dusty ground, which is a very light gray from Minotaur. Once again, great with my airbrush. I just want to create a gray first, and then I'll just do an ultimate highlight on it over certain parts of the helmet with snow white, also from Minotaur. Make sure to obviously properly tape off the, me the middle part of the helmet before doing that. And then I decided to use the old gold from the liquid gold range from Vallejo for the gold symbols on the model. Since Minute, since, since the Vallejo liquid golds are such a great finish to them, I figured it would really make this area pop and stand out and just look great. So then I so I decided to use the old gold because I like that. It's my favorite gold out of the liquid gold range. And I applied the liquid gold as well to the front part, just to the perimeter of the large jewel that's on the chest, I will be going over it with some greens afterwards. So, then I painted all the jewels that I wanted to paint them uh, Abaddon black. And once again, I added a little bit of a matte medium just to make it a little more dull. And then I decided to paint the jewels green. So I first started with Caliban green, 
And whenever doing these green jewels, make sure to, to dilute your paints. I used a little bit of thinner, just make sure that they're really nice and they flow really well. And that way they're great for creating a nice transition of colors and they blend very easily. And then I just went over the bottom parts of the jewels, basically creating the reverse cup shape of the jewel so that you'll be able to see it when it's finished. I'm just going over a certain pattern, which you will see. That way it creates a nice ball of black at the top and then you're gonna see just rings downwards. And we're gonna go from darkest um, at the top to lightest at the bottom. So the next, after the first coat was done, I used Warpstone Glow for the second highlight color. And as you can see, I left a lot of the top part and you can see the same pattern. It's much, uh, much easier to see now. And I did it below that point with Warpstone Glow. So now there's already the black to the Caliban green to the Warpstone Glow. Then we're gonna do one more color after this and repeat this pattern with Moot Green. This would also be a great area if you wanted to do such things as like a two brush blend. I just decided to uh, use a just a, a really uh, diluted color. And then I hit each parts after this with Way Watcher Green Glaze, which will really bring these colors close together as well as tint that black a little bit green. And then I applied White Scars. I just put a little bit of a dot in each jewel where the light source was facing. So you can see all of them are kind of directed towards the same source of light, which is why it, basically this jewel piece at the little top of it, the little bit of white is kind of the reflection of light hitting the jewel. And they look awesome. See, it was not a very slow process. It actually took me a very little time and not a lot of paint and just create some great appearances. And as I just decided to paint some of the jewels and want to paint all the jewels. And that's it. You now know how I painted up this awesome looking Wraith Knight in Samhan colors with not that much time. The key was using an airbrush and just creating some great shadows. As I said, there's not a lot of variation in color because it's just a quick, simple Samhan scheme, but I think it turned out really well based on the time I used and uh, I think it'll look amazing on the tabletop. So thank you very much for watching this painting tutorial. Please like the video, comment in the comment section down below of what you would like to see in future painting tutorials in the warp. And stay tuned in the warp for many more painting tutorials like this Wraith Knight. So thank you very much for watching for once again. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.